Hello everyone. Hey church. Welcome to church. Uh, we are right now outdoors in one of the beautiful parks of Berlin. This is Weissensee. Yeah. And you know, we've been doing this every Sunday after the Sunday experience. We've been hanging out. We was at Bubbles and Buddies, right? And you know, it's been such a good time to get to talk to people, of course, with safety and distance, you know, but this has been such a good season to get together as a church. In Berlin, when the sun is out, That's everyone right. goes outdoors, right? Yes. <laughs> so we are doing that also as a church, you know, and, and today is so much to celebrate, so much to look forward. Come on. It's Pentecost Sunday. Yeah. So represents the birthday of the church. So happy birthday. Happy birthday. We're so excited that you are here. Yeah. And you know, not only today, it's going to be the whole weekend, celebration weekend, That's also right. on Monday, right? Yes, so on Monday, actually, come with me because I want to show you this is one of the locations where we are going to be celebrating water baptisms. And it's going to be amazing. What a great decision to make. Yeah, and, and we've been listening to so many powerful stories, so many good decisions uh, that people turn That's into right. a powerful story of faith. You know, what about Sim? So how can people right now, if they want to know more about what yes. about Sim, what can they do? So you could write us right now in the chat if you want to know more about it. We would love to help you. I myself made a decision of getting water baptized 10 years ago in Schlachtensee. It was freezing, but it was good. It was the best decision. So why yeah. don't you write us there or also you can talk to one of our community hosts. Or, write an email. Or write an email, of course, on yeah. the website. Yeah, of course, we'd love to help you. And it's going to be a powerful step of faith. And you know, today, we are ready for the team to lead us in praise and worship. Come on. Our pastors, Mark and Joyce, are going to be coming in a moment also and pray for us and bring perspective in this season where we are right now. And right now, wherever you find yourself, I really want to encourage you that today is food on the table. That's right, spiritual food. Spiritual food. God still bringing food on the table. And we are ready, ready to go. I pray that everyone is going to be with open hearts, Come ready on. to receive God's word and God's wisdom. And you know, wherever you find yourself, I believe God's presence is with you. We both of Amen. us are really in this season experiencing God's presence <laughs> through I YouTube channel. It's not it. anymore, it's not a YouTube clip. It's actually God's food in the table. Come so come on, let's get ready. Let's go. Amen. Your faith awaits within the future. My dreams are small compared to yours. Should I worry about tomorrow and I know that all I gotta do is trust you?
Look at my chains out now Death has no hold on me Cause your grace owns that ground And your grace owns me now Your grace owns me now Well, hello everyone. So pleased to see you today. Thank you. You've been able to join us online and yeah. obviously today is going to be a fantastic Sunday. Yes. And special Sunday, Joyce? It is. It is a special Sunday. It's Pentecost Sunday. And, you know, we are celebrating because, you know, Pentecost, for those of you that may not know, is when the Holy Spirit came, that gift from God that He gave yeah. to, and the church got started. And exactly. I love it. The church got started. What we're part of today got started on the day of Pentecost. So it's going to be a great day and you've got a great message, Mark. Yeah, that's yeah. We're going to be bringing the word yep. to you today and really it's going to build strength and just bring perspective and understanding so we can understand how to move forward as a church. And it's the Holy Spirit that really is the strength behind all that we do. So, yep. yeah. It's going to be good. And, you know, we've also, before we hear Mark, you know, we've got a few things that we want to share with you. And one of the things that we do together, and we don't, this is not a familiar thing. I pray we'll never get familiar with bringing prayer requests and yeah, praise reports. Totally. And Absolutely. right now we're going to come around some of the prayer requests that have been put in. And, you know, definitely there's a lot this week when it comes to health. Believe in God for healing. Yes. Healing physically, healing emotionally, and with mental issues, mental health issues. And we're going to trust God with everybody yes. that is suffering in this regard. And then also a restoration of broken relationships, people who believe in God for jobs, yes. for theses, yeah. so many different things that we're believing God for, for apartments, etc. And then of course, as always, we remember the needs of our world. We remember the people who are suffering in Spain right now. For the, We, we believe in God for peace yeah. in the Middle East and so many different different situations and also for the people who have been impacted by the yeah. cyclone in India. So let's pray together right now. You know, Jesus Joyce, day. you're talking about all these needs, obviously, you know, locally here within our own community mm -hmm. and then obviously challenges around the world. And Jesus, remember he said, and you've, I've heard you mention it often is, let not your heart be troubled. Yes. And it's so easy to let our hearts be troubled, obviously when we're surrounded by so much chaos or craziness. And so this moment right now is about making a conscious decision. And I really do encourage all of our church, not just a few people to be really prayer warriors, um, but I really encourage all of our church, if you're new to faith or recently new, or even if you're seasoned in your faith, I really yeah. think it's important that we know how to carry this urgency in prayer and this responsibility in prayer. Why? Because yeah. I need our world needs the church to be praying. Yeah. You know, we support A21. Yeah. And one of the things about A21, it's an organization that is combating against, you know, exploitation, human, human trafficking. trafficking. But one of the success stories of A21 is this, that they have a prayer team. It's connected to the church. It came out of the church. Yeah, that's and right. prayer can open doors. Yeah. Prayer Powerful. can close doors. Prayer can really bring all of heaven's resources into most difficult situations. Yeah. So. Don't just be worried about what's going on in the world. Turn that worry and that energy that you find in worry, express that energy yeah. and turn it into prayer. Yeah, it and works. I really believe that where you can pray about anything, you can pray about anyone, it really does something to you personally. And I really believe it gives God something to work with in a profound way. So yeah. I couldn't be more encouraging us yeah. to really turn up our prayer. Absolutely. Summer season ahead of us, let's cover this summer season in prayer. Yeah. People are gonna be safe. People who, know, friends, name. family, loved ones are going to come to know Jesus. Yeah. Uh, we're praying for a continuation of the church to move forward with or without a venue. Yes, we're believing amen. for progress. And I believe what's going to carry our momentum and our progress and blessing and doors to open is this thing called prayer. Yeah. Amen. amen. So let's really carry this season of prayer together in Jesus' yes, name. Yes, beautiful. So. Let's pray, shall we? Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are a good and faithful God. Yes, Lord. And we thank you that we can bring every single need and request to you, knowing yes, that you hear us when we call. Yes, Lord. And Father, we pray for solution for yeah. every single situation. Yes, we Lord. pray that there'll be an outpouring of your Holy Spirit over people's lives. We pray there'll be an yeah. outpouring of your Holy Spirit over decision makers and leaders on planet Earth, Lord. And we ask for peace. We ask yeah. for wisdom. We ask for yes, strength Lord. and 
rest, Lord God. And Father, we ask that your hope, the hope yes. that you bring, will be manifest on this earth, we pray. In Jesus' beautiful name, amen. And everyone said? Amen. 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 Fantastic. Amen. Well, you know, again, it's always special. We can share these moments together and sharing these prayer moments as well. And it is just really what's going to keep us strong in this season. So, hey, just want to highlight something. Most people would have received a letter from Joyce and I this week. We sent one out uh, the back end of last week. So hopefully you got it on the weekend or the beginning of this, this week. Um, but I really want to encourage you. The letter just expresses our heart about who we are as a church, what's got us started and what's going to keep us continuing. Amen. I realize for many of you, maybe you didn't, you didn't start the journey. Some of you have. You've been on the journey right from the beginning. You know who you are. Mm -hmm. But there's a whole lot of you that have joined actually just recently in this season. For some of you, even online, you've never physically been in a church service with us yeah, together. True. But you know what? I really hope that this letter has encouraged all of us, helped us to stay united in faith and purpose. And you know, God can and does build His church whether we have venues or whether we don't have venues. Let's not yes. make it about venues yeah, right now. Yeah. We're doing everything we can practically speaking, to see venues open up for us. But that is not happening for us right now. But what is happening is lots of great things that we have when it comes to the community and the health and the vibrancy of the church. So let's focus yeah. on what we do have, church. What is it that we can do well in this moment? What is it that we can do well over the summer months? Yes. And you know, if the venue is not a reality, what is a reality? Yeah. Faith, generosity, hospitality, you, me, yeah. us, you know, whether we're playing volleyball, I always say that because people love volleyball, or whether we're just casually walking or having a, a barbecue or just being ourselves, enjoying everyday life together, God still adds people to people. God yes. doesn't join people to buildings. He doesn't join people to institutions. He actually helps all of us. I, my story is mm -hmm. I came to faith through someone who shared their story That's of faith. Right, and I stayed in church because I also met people in the church who were generous towards me. So you know what? How do we build our church? You, me, us working together, united around common purpose. So I really want to encourage Beautiful. you. Hopefully you got the letter. And if you're not, let us know and we'll send that to you. You can get it on the Instagram account, Hillsong Berlin account. But I think it just covers everything yeah. and really brings attention to what we do have and what we can do well in this season. So that's the most important Beautiful. thing right now. And Oh, this is Joyce's prayer alarm. <laughs> Oops, midday, baby, midday. Should we press snooze or should we press stop? So sorry. That was Joyce's phone. Oh, my days. Does that remind me to praise Jesus or something? I don't know. In any case, we've got some praise reports. Why well, is my phone even with me? Can I talk about Charity Water? Absolutely, darling. One of the Go things that I really want us to understand is every year as a church, we're committed to, because we get together, someone else benefits. And so on this card as well, we sent out on the website, you'll actually be aware of that we are partnered with strategic partnerships that want to eradicate poverty when it comes to communities around the world. But also we work in Berlin with the most vulnerable, the elderly, yeah. family seeking refuge, children who are living below the poverty line. So we're committed to making a difference. And we don't do that as one or two people, we do that as a church. Yes. And so Charity Water is one of the organizations we work with and they provide clean water, well, water for communities around the world that don't have access to clean water. It makes a huge difference. We've been able to run and raise money so that we can see these water wells established. So we've been doing it every year for the last 10 years and we're gonna continue this year. The good news is last year, yeah. every one of us, all of you included, uh, basically we raised more money last year in the middle of a pandemic yeah. when Charity Water said we most did. people were giving up and stopping what they were doing. We kept going and doing what we were called to do and we did it and we actually raised more money. So you did that, we did that together. Yeah. So well done, everyone. And we did it because we didn't just run, we did other things, didn't we? Like we baked and we did other things. We're going to do that again this year. We're going to create more opportunities for people to raise Yeah, funds. well, this year, definitely, there is more opportunities because some of you don't like running. But you know what? I do love that people even would just run just to raise money and really connected to a good purpose. But listen, this year we are broadening it out. There's gonna be opportunity for everyone to do something that's gonna raise finances yeah. for this new water well that we're wanting to uh, see established. 
So I'm really excited about Charity Water this year. Obviously, I really believe we can do it again. Yes. And really, everyone, let's get everyone involved. And like Joyce mentioned, you know, we're going to do a lot more things, initiatives that really will help us uh, succeed this year with the goal of raising finances for another incredible water well awesome. in a part of the world that desperately needs it. So looking forward to that. Check out the details and uh, do everything you can to be a part of it. It will mean a lot. Uh, well, right now we're going to take our giving, receive our giving, receive our giving. And uh, I love that we are a generous church. Yes. I love that you, me, us, I say that a lot because you know what? Church is not right. about one person or a yeah. few people. It's about all of us Absolutely. playing our part. And so I wanted to just highlight something today, actually. It's not so much a Bible verse that I want to share with you because every week we encourage from God's Word about our giving, Joyce has mentioned many times it's our worship to yeah. God. I think uh, as many other people have shared as well, it's about being generous because God has been generous to us. But I just want to highlight something. You know, since this pandemic kicked in and we've not been meeting as a church, we've had 54 messages, 54 messages that have come out every Sunday on this platform online. It's been an amazing journey. Yeah. It's been a challenging journey. It's been a stretching journey. Learning and new skills journey. My prayer is obviously is that we don't take it for granted because it's the best we can do. It's the best we've been able to do to keep everyone safe, but everyone connected. But think about them, 54 messages. There's been also 54 encouragements when it comes to giving and finances. And I think sometimes we've got to be willing. There's plenty of food being put on the table. It's a metaphor, spiritual metaphor. Yeah. But spiritual food has been put on the table and like all food, it needs to be eaten. It needs to be eaten, why? Yeah. Because when we eat food, it gives us energy so we actually can get on and do our lives. So good, and I think it's exactly the same with God's Word. It provides energy for what's ahead. Yeah. And you know, we can't force people to eat God's Word or God's food. But what I think is important that we understand when we value the importance of God's Word, receiving it, applying it, it really builds this atmosphere of faith. And yeah. if you want to see God work in your life, my friend, you've got to understand it's not hearing the Word, it's about applying the Word. Yeah. And if it's not in you, it's not going to come out of you. So for all of us, I really want to encourage you in our giving today, let's receive the Word. Let's receive the wisdom of God when it comes to our lives, when it comes to our finances. Yeah, and, it's great, man. and when we receive it, and we honor it, we respect it, value it. It's amazing how it becomes comes out of us. And so let's realize that if we want the Word of God to come out of us, we've got to put the Word of God in us. So 54 amazing messages. Wow. And I believe God's been speaking. Hopefully you've been doing the One Thing book because that helps us to mature in our walk with God, hearing His voice. But listen, the very first message was God's protection from Psalm 91, spoken by Joyce. Uh, we spoke about what can we do? We can keep praying, we can stay peaceful. Uh, talked about my confinement had the opposite effect. Yeah, it's amazing, amazing how all amazing. these restrictions that we've experienced, yeah. but Paul says it had the opposite effect. Instead of stopping the church, it actually helped the church to go even stronger. And I pray Fantastic. that all these messages, making God's call non-negotiable, a history-making generation, it is well with my soul. Uh, he is the God in every season from Pastor Yuri in Kiev in the Ukraine and uh, make the God connection and uh, the catalyst of boldness that was on our 11th, 11th birthday yeah, spoken by Pastor that, Nathaniel yeah. Wood from Australia. Uh, Pastor Brian spoke about you will prevail. We will prevail. Amen. amen. Uh, Julie Galanti, yes, your dear friend, our dear friend from soul. London. He is an anchor to our soul. Yeah. Amen. Love in Action, The Christmas Story. Uh, who are you becoming in 2021? All of these, a Caleb-type church, finding your safe place. Do words matter? And uh, what's God's plan for my life? A can-do spirit by the one and only Shashila. Sheila. Sorry, Sheila. <laughs> I could call her Shashila. I know, we should change her name to But Shashila. you know what I'm trying to say today as we receive our giving, as we honour God today with our giving, is think about how much wisdom yeah. and how much word that God has bring, brought to you and I and I do believe it's up to us that we're not just receiving the word, but we're applying it. Yeah. So my encouragement for all of us, be encouraged today. Yes. Go back and listen to the messages. Yeah. You know, let's really realize that if we can't pull things out of us, if it's not inside That's of us, right. you know, faith has to be applied. And I really believe the word of God, when it goes in you, it's going to have a chance to come out of you. So I really want to encourage you as we consider our giving today, as we carry this season together, as we really own the vision of our church, Let's really believe that God's going to continue to prosper you. He's going to continue to open up doors for you. But I believe what God does with you, I believe He also does with us. Amen. If your life's moving forward, 
the church will be moving forward. So Father, yeah. bless everyone that's giving today. Bless our church as we continue to lean into you and your wisdom. Amen. Lord, you have not abandoned us. You have not forsaken us. You said you'd never leave us and you're with us every step of the way. So thank you, Father, for the generosity of your people, Lord. And thank you, Lord, that you've entrusted us with so much vision and so much opportunity to serve others and to lift other people's lives. Father, Lord, as you continue to pour your blessing out on each and every person, Lord, I pray that we'll continue to honor you every step of the way. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Giving online is quick, easy, and secure. Here's how. You can go to hillsongberlin.de slash giving or download the giving app on your phone. Enter the amount you would like to give and your phone number or email address. If it's your first time, you will receive a verification code. Type it in and you're good to go. To set up a recurring giving, click the box here. And of course, you can also give via PayPal and EC card simply by following the instructions on the website. Thank you for your generosity. So I'm really looking forward to hearing you speak now, Mark. Yeah, and before we do. do that, though, we've got a beautiful item that the team have actually prepared for us. So be blessed as you listen to this, and then Mark will bring the word.
Well, welcome again to Pentecost Sunday. So, such an important Sunday in the life of our church. And I think obviously this Sunday represents so much to so many believers around the world. And so if you again, like we mentioned earlier, Joyce and I were talking about this, that, you know, if you're new to all of this, when it comes to faith and Holy Spirit and believing God, you know, the Holy Spirit was poured out 2000 years ago on ordinary people, people like just you and I. And obviously it started in Jerusalem, started with Jewish people. And many of the followers and disciples that were with Jesus uh, were Jewish in their ethnicity and in their background, and in their culture. But the Holy Spirit was poured out like the prophets Joel mentioned in the last days, the Holy Spirit would be poured upon all flesh. And so 2000 years ago, the Holy Spirit was poured out and it was pretty much 50 days after the Passover when Jesus had died. And it's a very significant thing because the book of Acts records so much detail for us. And so what I wanna really start off today, I wanna to share two verses, two major verses from the book of Acts. This really gives context. And then really wanna do is just give some uh, perspective on what the Holy Spirit has done for you and me, what the Holy Spirit has done for the church over the last 2000 years. So Father, we ask, for your presence to be with each and every one of us. Lord, we share these moments together on Sundays. It's the best we can do right now. But Lord, we love you. We love the word. And we pray for the Holy Spirit to be with each and every one of us as we open our heart to receive from you today. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, Acts chapter 1, verse 6, is 6 to 14. This is where I'm going to start. This is what it says. After the resurrection, Jesus appeared to the disciples on several occasions. On one of those occasions, they asked him, Lord, are you gonna free Israel from Rome now and restore us to a being an independent nation? They still didn't get what the Father was trying to achieve through the person of Jesus. They thought that they, uh, you know, Jesus was gonna be like a political overthrow Roman rule, rulership and restore Israel as an independent nation. Well, Jesus obviously had a different purpose. Our Heavenly Father had a different purpose. A much bigger plan was unfolding. And so Jesus replied this to the disciples, the Father sets those dates. The Father sets those dates and they are not for you to know. But when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, you will receive power to testify about me with great effect to the people in Jerusalem, throughout Judea, in Samaria, and to the uttermost parts of the earth, about my death and resurrection. It was not long afterwards that, though, that he rose into the sky and disappeared into the heavens, leaving them staring after him. As they were straining their eyes for another glimpse, suddenly two white-robed men were standing there amongst them. And they said this, men of Galilee, why are you standing here staring into the sky? Jesus has gone away to heaven. And someday, just as he went, he will return. Uh, they were at Mount Olives when this happened. So they walked about a half a mile back to Jerusalem and held a prayer meeting in an upstairs room of a house where they were staying. This is the list of the people that were present at that meeting. Peter, John, James, Andrew, Philip, Thomas, Bartholomew, Matthew, James, Simon, Jude, and the brothers and sisters of Jesus. Several other women, including Jesus' mother, was also there. So what an incredibly faithful group of people. You know, Jesus' own personal family, and all of the guys I mentioned there that's found in Acts chapter one, these all became the apostles. These became the guys that really carried out so much of the work of the early days of the church. So the Holy Spirit was poured out and began to move. Well, another great verse I wanna point you to is Acts chapter two, verses one to four. This is what it says. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a noise came from heaven. It sounded like a strong wind blowing. This noise filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw something that looked like flames of fire. These flames were separated and stood over each person there. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak different languages. The Holy Spirit was giving them the power to do this. 
So I love these verses because it really introduces into really what's happening in the early days of the church getting started, the power of the Holy Spirit. Today, Pentecost Sunday, it's about the power of the Holy Spirit. And I really believe that the Holy Spirit has been significant every step of the way when the church has really opened itself up to the fullness of the Holy Spirit where the church has really found momentum and progress. It's the Holy Spirit that moves the church forward, my friend. It's the Holy Spirit that actually introduces you and I into the presence of God. It's the Holy Spirit that creates a brand new spirit inside of us so that we can actually uh, really engage with our Heavenly Father. So it's the Holy Spirit that gets the church going and it's the Holy Spirit that has kept the church going. And that's why it's such an important message for you and I today to be reminded. And again, maybe for some of us, this is an introduction into what God has been doing through this church. Amen. So what gets you moving? Is there anything that gets you moving? I think sometimes we've got to remind ourselves, you know, moving forward is what we're all called to do. You don't need faith really to move backwards, but you do need faith to move forwards. And I really believe the Holy Spirit is always behind our progress your progress, my progress. I don't believe there's neutral when it comes to the kingdom of God. Sometimes I think we're, you know, we're maybe in neutral mode, but can I encourage you today? It's all about moving forward. It's not about pulling back because there is no neutral. So really make a decision today that there's nothing else for you, for me, for us, except moving forward. And to do that, we're gonna need the Holy Spirit, amen. So moving forward is about, I guess, changing position. It's about being proactive. And I believe that's what movement is all about. So the Holy Spirit creates movement in all of us. And that's really what I wanna focus on today. I believe there's so much blessing connected to movement. Our whole world basically has seen prosperity because we've created movement when it comes to goods and services and trade. There's so much blessing that comes when we can move. This last 18 months, I guess this last 15 months as a church, we've lost so much of our ability to move or to connect, to get to see each other in a more you know, meaningful, physical way. But the point is, is the Holy Spirit has not stopped moving. And I think we've just got to remind ourselves again, you know what, there may be restrictions in some ways, but the Holy Spirit is not restricted when it comes to building hope and faith and joy and purpose into our lives. So Hillsong Berlin, we've always enjoyed momentum. We've always enjoyed Holy Spirit movement. That's what happened when we wrote this letter to you the last week. You know, it's about the story. It's about the journey that God has worked in us and He's working through us. But this is the thing that I really want us to understand. You know, we don't want to have this kind of attitude in a church where, well, someone else is going to do it. You know, why don't you believe God that the Holy Spirit's going to use you? Holy Spirit's going to use me. He's going to use all of us together in a profound way. Our idea at Hillsong Berlin is this, that, you know, never leave someone the same way you find them. In other words, when you meet someone over the summer, the next few months over the summer, why don't you believe God that God's gonna use you to bring someone closer to Him? I really believe if you're willing to do that, if you're open to that, the Holy Spirit literally can put us in the right place at the right time. And it's amazing, you know, you can have the right conversation, you can say the right words, someone just needed to hear that. So many times as I look back, uh, you know, in the services on Sunday and just casually through community, I've also heard people say this, you know, oh, I I just heard the right things at the right time. I so needed to hear that. Sometimes on the Sunday services, a friend brings a friend and after the service, I'll hear something back like, oh, whatever you said, it's exactly what my friend needed to hear. You know why? Because even though it looks natural, looks ordinary, the Holy Spirit knows exactly what to say and when to say it. So why don't we just really allow the Holy Spirit to continue to work in us work through us because I really believe that's where life gets exciting. That's where I believe faith adventure becomes more interesting. And I really believe that Christianity is not boring at all. I believe it's an incredible faith journey, adventure journey, where you get to see God do incredible things in and through your life, amen. So healthy community groups, I really believe it's about a healthy community group is about moving people closer to Jesus and to each other. I believe healthy believers in a church are always going to help move people closer to the vision and not just to themselves. And I really believe a healthy church can help people to connect to the whole, not just the part. I really believe that's what the Holy Spirit can do when we are healthy and we allow health in our souls to come out everything that we do and say, amen. 
So some of the things the Holy Spirit can do in our lives, He can move us from being lost to found. That's what the Holy Spirit does. He moves us from being saved to called. That's the Holy Spirit. He helps us to move from being a guest in the house of God to becoming a family member in the house of God. He can help move us from pride to humility. Holy Spirit can help us move from being distant to becoming much closer to God, amen. Holy Spirit can move us from a position of being disadvantaged to advantaged. That's what the Holy Spirit can do. He can help us move from being a controlling type person to being a much more releasing type person. He can move us from being a slave, a slave to sin, but He can move us to becoming a son, a son of righteousness, amen. And I also believe the Holy Spirit moves us from unbelieving to believing. That's all the work of the Holy Spirit. So let the Holy Spirit continue to work in you and continue to work through all of us. And I really believe that would be a great, great blessing. So, you know, some things that I think we also have to consider, you know, it's not God's purposes and plans and intentions to move us away from Him. I believe there's other things that would try to move us away. So I just wanna give you a few things here to think about. These are not supposed to move us away. So don't let offense move you away from your post. This is important because I think so many times believers, they get offended and they allow the offense, the trap, to move them away from what God intended. And I really believe that's important that we hear this, especially in this season. Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse four. If the boss's anger rises against you, do not pull back and move away from your post. A calm spirit can overcome the greatest of offenses. I don't believe it's God's intention for you to move away, my friend. I don't believe it's God's intention for any of us to move away. I believe it's God's purposes for all of us to keep moving forward. That means we've got to overcome challenges, uh, disappointments. We've got to also make a decision that we're gonna overcome misunderstandings because when you put ordinary people in the house of God together from all walks of life, there is a great, great chance that we're gonna misunderstand each other and we're gonna make mistakes. And I just think we've got to allow the Holy Spirit to stay in our lives so that we can overcome these things. Another thing I really think that we've gotta be aware of when it comes to moving away, don't let the enemy move you away from your faith. Don't let the enemy, Pastor Brian's message last week about distractions, Nehemiah refused to be distracted from the job of building, rebuilding the walls of Jerusalem. Well, come on, in this season, we've got plenty of opportunity, I guess, to be distracted, but we're not gonna allow the enemy to move us away from our faith, amen? First Peter chapter five, verses six to nine. Be alert and cautious at all times, the enemy, of yours, the accuser, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour, but resist him. Be solid in your faith, rooted and established, immovable, <laughs> immovable. That's what I love about this word here. It's saying be immovable. And I really believe that's exactly what we can be, immovable when it comes to our walk with Jesus. Know that you are not alone in your suffering. Many believers around the world are experiencing the same challenges as we are in Berlin. So be immovable in your faith. Don't let the enemy take you out. Don't let anyone take you out when it comes to what God has for you, amen. And then one more thought here, and then we're gonna move on <laughs> because it's about moving. Don't let anyone or anything slow you down. Hebrews chapter 12, verses one to two. Since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of people to the life of faith, let us strip off anything that slows us down or holds us back, and especially those things that wrap themselves around so tightly around your feet and trip us up. Let us run with endurance the race that God has set before us. Keep your eyes on Jesus, our leader and instructor in the life of faith. How good is that? So I really believe that we can keep moving forward, but let's not be naive and let's not be unaware that there are things out there that want to take us backwards, move us backwards. So be purposeful, be cautious, yes, but be purposeful about all that God has for you, amen? So really, I wanna share with you just some things again. What does the Holy Spirit do when it comes to moving us forward? The Holy Spirit, I really believe, keeps you and I moving towards Jesus. That's the Holy Spirit's job, to keep moving us towards Jesus. I don't wanna move away from Jesus. <laughs> I want more of Jesus in my life, you know, because I realize that He is the greatest person in my life. He's the greatest need of my life. He's the only one that died for me and saved me. He's the only one that can actually bring me closer to all that God has for me, amen. 
So that's what the Holy Spirit does. My prayer for everyone listening today, that you will have such a desire for the Holy Spirit to keep working in you, that it brings you, Holy Spirit brings you closer towards Jesus, amen. Hebrews chapter four, verses 15 to 16, I love this. Now that we know what we have with Jesus, this great high priest with ready access to God, let us not let it slip through our fingers. We don't have a priest who is out of touch with our reality. He's been through weakness and testing, experienced it all, everything but sin. So let us move towards him and receive what he is so ready to give. Take the mercy, accept the help. I love that, amen. So let the Holy Spirit you move you and me towards Jesus. I love that, amen. Number two, the Holy Spirit keeps you moving towards people. How amazing is that? The Holy Spirit moves us towards Jesus and the Holy Spirit can move us towards people. This is what Acts chapter one, verse eight says. When the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you will receive power to testify about me with great effect to the people in Jerusalem, throughout Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth about my death and resurrection. So what is the Holy Spirit gonna do? It's gonna move you and I towards other people. That's exactly what the Holy Spirit did 2000 years ago. That's exactly what the Holy Spirit has been doing for the last period of time in our life, amen. He moves us towards other people. I love that. We're not just thinking about ourselves. We're not inward looking. We're always outward focused. And I make no apologies that our church, Hillsong Berlin, is always gonna be about new people. It's always gonna be about strengthening our house so that we can keep reaching more people with all the good news that Jesus has for humanity, amen. Because that's what we're called to do. Number three, the Holy Spirit keeps you moving towards God's purposes for your life. Philippians chapter three, verses 12 to 14. This is what it says. I do not consider myself have arrived spiritually, nor do I consider myself already perfect, but I keep moving forward, taking hold even more firmly of that purpose for which Christ took a hold of me. My brothers, I do not consider myself to have figured all of this out even now, but I stay focused on the one thing. I leave the past behind with hands outstretched to whatever lies ahead. I move straight for the goal. My reward, the honor of being called by God in Christ. Now this is the Apostle Paul and he is absolutely going for God. And he actually understood it was the Holy Spirit that was gonna help move him forward. And I'm telling you, he was a significant player when it comes to the house of God. He was the one that God used in a profound way when it comes to new churches all across the first century, you know, uh, in, in the Mediterranean. You know, God used Paul in a profound way. And he wrote, obviously, a, a large percentage of the, the letters and the books that we read in the New Testament. And it was the Holy Spirit that got a hold of his life. He allowed the Holy Spirit. What? what could the Holy Spirit do in your life if you just surrendered to Him 100%? What could He do in us? What could He do through you? What could He do through me? Who could He bring healing to when we just say, yeah, God, I'm willing to be obedient? What could He do in a profound way that could literally bring so much hope into people's lives? Oh man, I get so stirred up. And I read these verses over and over again. And I tell you what, it will light the flame in your life. It will keep you energized because I believe that's what the Holy Spirit does. Number four, the Holy Spirit movement and faith go together. Hebrews chapter 11, verse six. It's impossible to please God apart from faith. And why? Because anyone who wants to move towards God must believe both that He exists and that He cares enough to respond to those who seek Him. So you can see Holy Spirit movement and faith work together. You can't have the Holy Spirit moving on your life and then just pull back. I believe when you let the Holy Spirit move, it's incredible how you mix that with faith. It really does help us to move forward in a profound way, not just to encounter our Heavenly Father, but to really be used by God in this world, in this society that desperately needs to see a kind, generous God, amen. He uses us, He uses me, He uses the church. Number five, the Holy Spirit movement brought salvation. That's what the Holy Spirit did. It brought salvation to all of us. Acts chapter 10, 44 to verse 44 to 48. While Peter was still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit moved on all those who were listening to him speak. The Jewish believers who came with Peter were amazed that the Holy Spirit had been poured out as a gift also to the people who were not Jews. 
they heard them speaking different languages and praising God. When Peter said, how can anyone object to these people being baptized in water? They had received the Holy Spirit the same way we did. So Peter told them to baptize Cornelius, a Roman officer, and all his relatives and friends in the name of Jesus Christ. And they asked Peter to stay with them for a few more days. I love that. So here's Peter, who's a Jew. He's being used by God to reach non-Jewish people. This is pretty profound. Back then, 2,000 years ago, Cornelius is a Roman officer. He has authority. He's living in someone else's land. He has occupied someone else's land. Rome was the dominant civilization at the time. And who does God begin to use? Peter to reach out to Cornelius and his friends and his family. And back then, you know, they were open to God, but they just didn't, didn't know that the Holy Spirit could move on their lives. And Peter allowed God to use him in a profound way. You know what? I think it's something that we can all learn from. It's about taking off the limitations. Don't limit what God can do or what He wants to do. That's what the Holy Spirit was doing through Peter. Peter was limiting himself. He said, well, I only can speak to Jews. And God's saying, no, uh, what I have made clean, don't you dare call unclean. In other words, God's plan was much bigger than man's plan. And I love that. So Peter, obedient to God, allowed himself profoundly to be used in Cornelius' life and his family and his relatives. And you never know, some of these people could be the people that went back and started the church in Rome that Paul actually wrote a letter to later on. What I love about it is when the Holy Spirit begins to start moving, incredible things start to happen. And I love that this is a great example that salvation came to this Cornelius' house, to his family and to his friends. And I believe that's exactly what's gonna happen this summer. When you and I will allow the Holy Spirit to continue to work in our lives, I believe the Holy Spirit can use our everyday life through this summer why don't we believe God that our church is gonna move forward? There's no reason why, but we have gotta be willing to take off the limitations. Let's be willing to change our mindsets about how God can work in us and through us. Our church, Hillsong Berlin, has always moved forward through the summer season. Why? Because we've not limited God. Let's be generous and let's believe for the Holy Spirit to put us in the right place at the right time. And let's believe for supernatural things in Jesus' name. Number six, the Holy Spirit movement brought increase. The Holy Spirit brought increase. Acts chapter 11, verses 9 to 21. Meanwhile, the believers who had been scattered during the persecution after Stephen's death moved as far as Lebanon, Cyprus, Antioch of Syria. They preached the Word of God, but only to Jews. However, some of the believers, I love this, some of the believers who went to Antioch from Cyprus and Cyrene began preaching to other people who were not Jews about the Lord Jesus. The power of the Lord was with them and a large, listen, a large number of those people believed and turned to the Lord. So here's another great example of allowing the Holy Spirit to use us in a really ordinary everyday life. They went to Antioch and guess what? Some of them, they broke the mold. They stepped out of the comfort zone and they started sharing their faith, the Lord Jesus, with people that they were just hanging out with. I really believe that's what God's done in the past. I believe God can continue to do it with us. Come on, stir up your faith, church, because that's what the Holy Spirit does. He leads us, He guides us, He strengthens us. It might look ordinary, but I'm telling you that it's an invitation to all of us to continue to allow God to use us in this season, amen? There's so many more people who yet are just waiting to hear the beautiful good news of Jesus. And number seven, Holy Spirit movement brings provision. That's what the Holy Spirit does. He brings provision to all of us. Acts chapter four, verse 32 to 34. All the believers were of one heart and mind. No one claimed that any of their possessions was their own, but they were willing to share everything they had. With great power, the apostles continued to testify to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus and God's grace was so powerfully at work in all of them that there was no needy persons amongst them. From time to time, those who owned lands or houses sold them and brought the increase from their sales. <laughs> this is incredible. And this is again what the Holy Spirit does. He leads us towards provision and increase. See, I love that line that it says, there was no unmet need amongst them, which means it's possible that we can be generous 
and we can meet the needs of our own community, but we can also begin to meet the needs of others that we find ourselves doing life with. Those who are less fortunate, maybe those who are struggling. I really believe, church, let's not limit God. Let's not limit Him in this season. Let's not limit Him in any season because through the Holy Spirit, He can lead us to blessing. He can lead us to prosperity. He can lead us to provision when it comes to our own lives and I believe to the lives of others. I really believe, church, you can be encouraged today from the Word of God, great, great examples of what Jesus wants to do in and through us. It's the Holy Spirit. Pentecost Sunday, let's stir our heart. Let's stir our imagination. Let the Holy Spirit begin to take us further than we've ever imagined. Let for the Holy Spirit to begin to open hearts in Warsaw, in Poland. Let's just believe God that He's gonna continue to use us as a church as we extend our hands and our hearts and our spirit towards basically the people in Prague and the city and the nation of the Czech Republic. There are so many places that are desperate for the Holy Spirit, desperate for the good news. And you know what? Hillsong Berlin, that's why we exist. We're not here for ourselves, self-centered, me, me, me. No, no, no. We're here to bring the fragrance of heaven into as many people and as many places as possible. So with venue, without venue, let the church move forward. Holy Spirit, right now I ask that you will just be poured out into every hungry heart. Oh, where there's a willing heart, Father, fill every hungry heart. Lord, just show yourself faithful to each and every one of us. We're hungry for you like never before, but take us forward in Jesus' name. All that we've heard today, Lord, let it be filled up in our hearts today. Let us not just hear it and ignore it. No, no, no. Let us actually believe it and apply it into every aspect of our life. Father, bless our church. Bless each and every one that's listening today, whether they're in Berlin, they're in another part of this country called Deutschland, or maybe other parts of Europe or other parts of the world. But Father, let hearts be stirred today. Let faith rise and let the Holy Spirit continue to be poured out upon each and every one of us in Jesus' mighty name. And all of God's people said together, Amen. Amen. Well, I'd love to take this moment just to really pray a prayer of salvation for everyone that's joining us today. You know, this is the one moment that we all work towards. It's the greatest joy of our heart that we're able to share Jesus uh, with anyone that really doesn't know how, uh, you know, how good He is towards humanity. And so the message of the cross and Jesus dying and rising again, it's one of the greatest, greatest things you and I will ever experience in our lives. You know, if we don't put Jesus at the center of our lives, if we don't actually acknowledge Him as our Lord and Savior, what we tend to do as human beings is we put someone else or something else in His place. So today, my encouragement, my invitation to everyone that's joining us, make a decision today that you're gonna put Christ at the center of your life because it's better to do life with Him than to do life without Him. And I really would love you to join with me in this prayer of salvation right now because that's what the Holy Spirit does. He helps to open our eyes to see Jesus for who He really is. He's not just a good man or a good idea. He's not just a concept. He is an absolute Savior of humanity. He's the only one who died and He's the only one who was qualified to pay the price for all of humanity's mess and mistakes. So today, let the Holy Spirit open your heart to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And for anyone who's joining us today, maybe you've got caught off track, maybe you've drifted, maybe you walked away, maybe you made mistakes and you kind of feel like you're not measuring up. You know, the truth is none of us measure up. It's Jesus that measures up. That's why He laid down His life because He was the only one to qualify, amen? So when we pray this prayer of salvation, let it be a chance to really help you move forward today because exactly what the Holy Spirit does, He helps all of us to move forward as we keep our eyes on Jesus. So if you'd like to pray that prayer today, whether it's the first time or maybe for some people, you're pressing the reset button, get back on track, Pentecost Sunday, moving forward in Jesus' name, amen? Come on, let's pray this prayer. The words will be on the screen. Dear Jesus, thank you for accepting and loving me. Thank you for dying on the cross and thank you that you rose again to give me eternal life. Today, I have decided to follow you, Jesus, and accept you as my Lord and Savior. Thank you for forgiving me of all my sins, past, present, and future. From now on, I declare I am loved by God, I am forgiven, and I am a child of God. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Well, congratulations, my friend. You know, if you've prayed that prayer today, sincerely, purposefully, you know, you just know that there's a sense of the Holy Spirit right where you are. I really wanna encourage you to let us know. 
and do your very best to connect with like-minded people, people of faith. We'll do our very best to help connect you uh, to a community group if you're here in Berlin. But let us know, DM us, and we just want to cheer you on and really believe that you're going to move forward in Jesus' name. Amen. So congratulations and keep moving forward in Jesus' name. Wow, what a great word. Thank you, Pastor Mark. That was amazing. Yeah, and you know what? If you made that decision today, we would love to come alongside to help you. So why don't you let us know in the chat, wherever you are, write us DM. We would love to be part of this journey. Yeah, it's so good. And absolutely, if, if you made that decision, we are here to help. And today is not over yet. That's right. We are here in the park and we're still going to be enjoying today. So wherever you are, whatever location you are, yeah. we'd love to see you there. Get your buddies, yeah. go for a coffee, yeah. ice cream, a walk. And you can, we're also doing some sports outside, That's right? That's right. I've been loving this. Like I've been doing last Sunday uh, table tennis, actually. Table tennis, yes. And it's been like such a good thing to get to know new people, to see people that I haven't seen in such a long time. Yeah. And it's been great conversations and good time. Yeah, and, come on. Yeah. And don't forget tomorrow you can be part of the water baptism. So yeah. let us know. Yeah, you can email, you can write a DM on Instagram and we'll get in touch with you this afternoon. Come on. And we started in the week strong. Actually, on Tuesday, yes. it's our third and last session from Enlarge, A Healthy You. And we'd love to see you there. Even if you were not part, right, on the yes. last two, yes, it's you not can too late. still, exactly, you can still join this one. And Healthy You, when it comes to relationships, to yeah. friendships, to marriage. Dating. Parenting, yeah, dating, exactly. <laughs> so wherever you find yourself, you know, it's going to be a, such a powerful third and last session. We'd love to see you there. So Great. have a good week. See you later. It's going to be awesome. Bye. Ciao. Just rhythm